Yes! yes! No differently than Destiny 2, hand cannons were some of, if not the most popular weapon type in Destiny 1. Fan favorite exotic hand cannons such as the Last Word and Thorn dominated in Destiny 1's PvP, only to return to Destiny 2 and do the exact same thing. But there's another exotic hand cannon that rivaled the popularity level of the Last Word and Thorn, and if you already didn't know, I'm referring to the Hawk Moon. Hawk Moon was a vanilla Destiny 1 exotic exclusive to PS3 and PS4 until the release of the Taken King DLC that kicked off year 2 of Destiny 1 when it also became available for Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Of course, PlayStation exclusive content is a thing of the past as well as something that Bungie stated would never happen again. Hawk Moon was a kinetic exotic hand cannon belonging to the 22 Red of Fire 81 Impact class of hand cannons, but in Destiny 2 lamest terms, this would be the same archetype as the 140 RPM adaptive frame hand cannons, i.e. Ace of Spades and Better Devils. Intrinsic perks for legendary weapons didn't exist in Destiny 1 to denote what archetype each weapon belonged to, so back then we will refer to each weapon by the Red of Fire Impact. But yeah, in terms of performance, Hawk Moon did amazingly. And even though it didn't have that many perks, the two perks it did have were incredibly powerful and reliable. Hawk Moon's first perk was known as Luck in the Chamber, which would grant a random round in Hawk Moon's 13 round magazine 33% extra damage. Luck in the Chamber was also available for other hand cannons in Destiny 1, so that wasn't Hawk Moon's main selling point. That existed in the form of its exotic perk known as Holding Aces, which added two more bonus damage rounds to the magazine, bringing a total up to three. Hawk Moon had a very special notification sound in the form of a very strident ping whenever a lucky round was fired. And each time this weapon was reloaded, the three lucky rounds were randomized again. At one point in time, it was possible for the bonus damage to roll on one single round, enabling Hawk Moon to one-shot enemy guardians. However, this was an incredibly rare occurrence. I was a huge fan of when exotic ornaments made their debut in Destiny 1 because Hawk Moon had an ornament known as Moon Glow. And on this ornament, the golden feathers on the barrel was set ablaze whenever a lucky round was fired. Okay, now that we got to know Hawk Moon a bit better, let's talk about if this weapon would make a good addition to Destiny 2. Hawk Moon is an exotic hand cannon. That's pretty obvious, right? But how many exotic hand cannons do we already have in Destiny 2? Let's count them up. Sturm, Crimson, Malfeasance, Ace of Spades, The Last Word, Thorn, Lumina, Sunshot, and Ariana's Vow. That's nine exotic hand cannons. And out of nine, three of them are Destiny 1 throwbacks. So if you're somebody who really wants Hawk Moon to return, ask yourself if we really need another exotic hand cannon. In my opinion, we don't. Hand cannons are not only the most popular weapons in the Destiny franchise, they're also the most effective no matter where you use them. In Destiny 1's PvE, I exclusively use scout rifles for their overall reliability. But due to how underwhelming scout rifles are in Destiny 2 in both PvP and PvE, I hardly ever use scout rifles rifles at all, but in PvE, I use hand cannons instead. Hand cannons have significantly better damage output, and their stopper power reminds me of what Destiny 1 scout rifles could do in PvE. Going back to the point of hand cannons being effective everywhere in Destiny 2, that applies mostly to PvP, as Luna's Howl, Not Forgotten, Thorn, Last Word, Spare Rations, and Ace of Spades are the most used weapons in the Crucible, and it's been that way since the debut of each of these weapons. Even after the range nerf and recoil animation change, hand cannons have exhibited that they're here to stay. So even if Hawk Moon did return, it wouldn't be nearly as defining as it was in D1. It would literally just be another exotic hand cannon. And I understand how all the nostalgia junkies feel when their favorite weapon returns or how badly they want their favorite weapons to make a comeback, but believe me when I say that Hawk Moon is something that should stay in Destiny 1. Allow me to elaborate. Hawk Moon is a 140 RPM hand cannon. For those of you that know the state of 140s in PvP, I could literally stop right there. But for those of you that don't, understand that 140s in PvP are in a horrible state and are significantly weaker than what they were in D1. In D1, 140 RPM hand cannons hit for 86 to the head and 57 to the body, only requiring two crits and one body shot to put a guardian down. In D2, they hit for 70 to the head and 47 to the body, requiring three crits for an optimal TTK of 0.87 seconds. 140s in D1 also had an optimal time to kill of 0.87 seconds, but it was so much easier to get that fast time to kill because of the fact that 140s in D1 did so much more damage. In Destiny 2, the natural occurrence of a 140 killing somebody with two crits and one body shot is impossible. Possible. In Destiny 2's PvP, 150 RPM hand cannons have proven to be the most reliable due to only dealing 2 less damage per crit and 4 less damage per body than the 140 RPMs, equating to an optimal time to kill of 0.80 seconds. 150 RPM hand cannons shoot faster, have a better optimal TTK, and for the exception of Luna's High and Not Forgotten, 150 RPM hand cannons have the lightweight frame intrinsic perk, which grants a boost to movement speed. Whereas the 140 RPM legendary hand cannons in Destiny 2 have the adaptive 
have to frame a Trinsic perk, which, as far as I'm concerned, does nothing. All of these reasons give 140 RPM hand cannons little to no incentive to be used in PvP in their present day state. So what makes you think that Hawk Moon would be any different? And if you're still not convinced, check this out. Remember how I said that Hawk Moon's lucky rounds hit for 33% extra damage and 140 RPM hand cannons in Destiny 2 hit for 70 per crit? Well, if you do the math, 70 plus 33% equals about 93, which is the same damage that 140 RPM hand cannons in Destiny 2 hit for when a kill clip perk is proc'd. So if Hawk Moon was in Destiny 2, there would be three random times when it would deal kill clip damage. And that does not sound appealing at all to me, especially when you realize the kill clip lasts for five seconds and every round fire during the time that the buff is active will receive 33% extra damage, not just three random ones. And this brings up another interesting point. In Destiny 2, Hawk Moon's biggest competitor would be the Ace of Spades. And the reputation of this weapon would be a mystery only to those who are new to the game, a returner player who skipped all of year two, or somebody who's been living under a rock for the past year. Okay, with all due fairness, Ace wasn't nearly as popular on console as it was and still currently is on PC, but still. If you've been playing Destiny 2 since year two, I'm pretty sure you've heard at least stories of the presence of Ace in PvP on PC, and that's obviously because of the recoil differences on PC. Now, Ace of Spades and Hawk Moon have two things in common. They're both exotic, kinetic hand cannons, and they're also both present in Destiny 1. But when Ace of Spades returned to Destiny 2, it came back with a bang, and it's leaps and bounds better than its D1 version, similarly to the likes of Thunderlord, Outbreak, and to some extent The Last Word. All of these reprised exotic weapons do the same things that they did in D1, except much, much better. And that's exactly how it should be, because if you want some to return from Destiny 1, you should want it to be better than what it once was. Now, back to the Ace and Hawk mode comparisons. Ace of Spades has a total of five functional perks. Yeah, you heard that right. And if you're still confused, allow me to break it down. Momentum Mori is actually two perks at one. One of them being similar to Kill Clip, except with three damage points less and Third Eye, which is a perk in Destiny 1 that kept your radar up while aiming down the sights. High Caliber Rounds is his third perk, and the fourth and fifth perks are what the Firefly perk is composed of. One half of the Firefly perk gives Ace the Outlaw perk, which increases is his reload speed from precision kills and a perk known as Firefly in Destiny 1 but was changed to Dragonfly in Destiny 2. This perk enables Ace to inflict solar damage, making this weapon the only kinetic damage in Destiny 2 capable of inflicting elemental damage outside of the exotic Warlock chest armor known as the Chromatic Fire, which grants the Dragonfly perk to all kinetic damage precision kills. So that's five perks compared to Hawk Moon's two perks. And honestly, if you think about it, that's basically one perk because if Hawk Moon existed in Destiny 1, holding Aces would be its exotic intrinsic perk and all three of the lucky rounds will come from there, instead of one lucky round belonging to Luck in the Chamber and the other two belonging to Holton Aces. Remember how I said that Momentum Mori rounds did three less damage than rounds buffed by a kill clip? When you get a kill with Ace of Spades, the first six rounds fire inflict 90 damage per crit and 60 per body, and these six rounds will only disappear if Ace is stole or if his wielder is killed. Now having six permanent guaranteed extra damage rounds sounds a whole lot better than three random extra damage rounds, and if Hawk Moon was the return of Destiny 2 in his Destiny 1 form, there'd literally be no point of you using it over Ace of Spades. Now let me be honest here, aesthetically Hawk Moon is one of the best looking exotic weapons of all time. It has feathers embossed into its barrel, and there's a bird talent protruding from the bottom of its handle, and both of its ornaments looked amazing too. I mean let's be real, this is one of the most detailed exotic weapons ever made. The carry-on ornament featured blood smeared on the barrel, and the moon glow ornament that we talked about previously changed Hawk Moon from silver to black, its feathers to gold, and the feathers were set ablaze whenever one of the lucky rounds was fired. In Destiny 2, I could see Hawk Moon's base cosmetic taking on that of the moon glow ornament and when the lucky rounds were fired not only would the feathers ignite it will also be cool if a bird screech sound was present as well cannot tell me that wouldn't be dope. Now some time ago it was rumored that Hawk Moon will return in Season of Opulence as stated by famous Destiny leaker known as Ananda 9 and this claim sounded even more credible when we found out that the famous Ice Luna from Destiny 1 will be returning in the form of the Outstringer. Ice Luna was the legendary version of Hawk Moon, not only due to their similar cosmetics but also their names. The word Ice means Young Hawk and Luna is another name for the moon so Ice Luna means Young Hawk Moon and Outstringer means Keeper of Goshawks so it definitely sounded like Hawk Moon was making a comeback, but we're already in Season 9, and Season of Opulence was two seasons ago. Bungie could have simply delayed the release of Hawk Moon or removed it from the list of returning exotics, because from what I remember, everything that Ananda 9 said actually ended up happening. Alright everybody, that does it for this one. I enjoyed Hawk Moon in Destiny 1, but I think I made it incredibly apparent that I believe that it should stay in Destiny 1. But I know for a fact that there are a lot of people out there who enjoyed this weapon a lot more than I did, and would still like for it to return. So in the comment section, do me a favor and tell me if you would like for Hawk Moon to return, or if 
if you agree that it should stay in Destiny 1. If you made it to the end of this video, I need you to thumb rest that like button until it turns blue. And if you're new to my neck of the woods, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you won't ever miss a video of the most elite gaming content. But with that being stated, 1LHD is over and out. Y'all take it easy.